Here we're going to look at the first isomorphism theorem for rings. So in fact, there are these types of isomorphism theorems for all algebraic structures. So we already looked at the first, second, and third isomorphism theorem for groups. Now we're going to do the same thing for rings. So let's look at the statement. So we'll suppose that phi from R to S is a ring homomorphism. Then there is a unique ring isomorphism psi from R mod the kernel of phi. So that's going to be the quotient ring. So we know that the kernel is uh, an ideal from a previous video. So we know that that forms a ring. Um, and that's going to go into the image of phi. And so, and that isomorphism satisfies the following property, psi of this coset R plus kernel of phi is going to be the same thing as phi of R. And so, this is generally exhibited by the following commutative diagram. So notice we have R maps onto the image of phi. Notice I've put a double arrow here because it's onto the image. That's going to be a subring of S. And then we have this projection homomorphism down to the quotient. So R gets projected down to R mod kernel of phi. And then this is completed by this unique isomorphism psi. And then this little loop here with an arrow means that it's a commutative diagram. In other words, we can go this direction and this will send R to phi of R, or we could go in this direction. So here R will go to R plus the kernel of phi, that coset, up to uh, psi of that, but then what we should get is that these things are the same. All right, so there's actually a shortcut for the proof that means that we can say that this is true on the level of abelian groups, um, given the fact that rings have an abelian group structure. But I'm going to go ahead and not use that shortcut just because it's nice to see all of the details. So uh, the first thing that I want to show is that this function psi that we're going to define is in fact well defined. And then once we have that it's well defined, uh, we can check that it's a homomorphism, which actually that's pretty easy, and that it is unique. So uh, let's go ahead and define psi, and it's going from r mod the kernel of phi up to the image of phi, which is a subring of s. And Notice if we're defining it where that is the domain, we need to say what it does to a coset. So it takes the coset r plus kernel of phi up to phi of r. Okay. So we need to show that this function is well defined. And how do you know that you need to check that it's well defined? You look into the domain and you say, can elements in the domain have different names but be the same? And in fact they can because we know cosets can have different representatives but be the same coset. Another example of this is like the rational numbers. The rational numbers can have different names but be the same. So one half and two fourths, those things have different names but they're the same. So uh, what we want to do here is start off by supposing um, that we have two cosets that are the same but maybe have different names. So in other words, r plus kernel of phi is equal to r prime plus kernel of phi. And what we want to do is apply um, psi to each of these. Well, before we do that, let's go ahead and notice that the equality of these two cosets is equivalent to saying r minus r prime is in the kernel of phi. So that's an equivalent of uh, ring cosets. So now we can go ahead and do this. Notice that psi of r plus kernel of phi. So that's going to be the same thing as uh, phi of r by how we're defining psi. But that's going to be the same thing as phi of r plus, um, plus zero. But notice that uh, zero is the same thing as phi of um, r prime minus r. Obviously, if r minus r prime is in the kernel, then r prime minus r is also in the kernel. So, which tells us that phi of r prime minus r is equal to zero. 
But now what we can do is mash those two together using the fact that phi is a ring homomorphism. That's going to give us r plus r prime minus r, which equals phi of r prime. But we know phi of r prime is exactly equal to psi of r prime plus kernel of phi. So we started with two cosets that were equal to each other but had different names. We did not presuppose that r and r prime were the same. They're different representatives of the same coset. And then we saw that if we stuck those inside of this map that we defined psi, we got the same output. So what that tells us is that this map is indeed well defined. All right, I'm going to clean up the board, then we're going to show that it's a ring homomorphism. We just finished proving that this psi is well defined. Now we're going to prove that it is a ring homomorphism. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So let's look at psi of. I'm going to go ahead and use a instead of r because um, I like it a little bit better. So we have a plus kernel of phi um, plus b plus kernel of phi. But by coset addition, that's the same thing as psi of a plus b plus kernel of phi. But then uh, by the fact that we know the action of psi, that's going to be the same thing as phi of a plus b, which is the same thing as phi of a uh, plus phi of b, given the fact that phi is a ring homomorphism. But that's going to be the same thing as psi of a plus kernel of phi plus psi of b plus kernel of phi. So notice here we took the addition that was happening inside of the homomorphism, the would-be homomorphism, and we factored it to the outside of the homomorphism. And now uh, the next thing that we need to check is that uh, psi of a plus kernel of phi times b plus kernel of phi is equal to uh, psi of a plus kernel of phi times psi of b plus kernel of phi. And I'll actually let you guys do that. It's essentially the same thing as what we just did. It's just instead of having uh, an addition between the elements, we have a multiplication between the elements. Um, so there's not actually much to do there. Okay, now I'll uh, erase the board. We need to check that this thing is one-to-one -one and onto. Okay, we've checked that this is a ring homomorphism. Now we're going to check that it's injective. Then we'll check that it's surjective, so we will know it is a ring isomorphism. So in order to show that it's injective, we're actually going to look at its kernel. Recall that um, something is one-to-one -one if and only if the kernel is trivial. So let's go ahead and suppose that r plus kernel of phi is inside the kernel of psi. Now it might look a little bit tricky because we've got the word kernel everywhere, but let's just recall that this is a coset of the quotient ring R mod kernel of phi. But notice over here, this is the kernel of the map psi. Okay, so now let's act on this by psi. So psi of R plus kernel of phi. Given the fact that it's in the kernel of psi, that's going to give us zero within the image. But on the other hand, we know that this is equal to phi of r. But let's look at the left and right hand side of this. We have phi of r equals zero, but that is exactly saying that r is in the kernel of phi. But that means that r plus the kernel of phi is the same thing as zero plus the kernel of phi. In other words, it is the additive identity with inside this quotient ring. So let's just reiterate what we've got going on here. We've got an arbitrary element inside the kernel actually had to be the zero element, but that tells us that the kernel of psi is equal to one element only, and that is the zero element. So the kernel of psi is trivial, which tells us that psi is injective. Good. So now let's do surjectivity. That's actually uh, pretty easy. And what we want to do is suppose that we have an element from the image, but notice everything from the image is of the form phi of r. 
That's just the definition of the image. And then uh, let's go ahead and notice that if we take psi of r plus kernel of phi, that's going to be equal to phi of r. So we found a pre-image for that element. This is actually built to be onto. That's why there's really no work here. All right, I'll clean up the board. And then we need to prove that this psi is unique. Okay, so to finish this thing off, we're gonna show that this psi that's defined this way is unique, but notice the defining property of psi, in other words, the uniqueness is predicated on the fact that it takes this coset r plus kernel of phi to uh, phi of r. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and suppose that psi tilde also takes r plus kernel of phi up to phi of r. Since every element of this quotient ring can be written in this form, we know that this map psi tilde and this map psi agree at every element of their domain, but agreeing at every element of their domain means that they are the same as functions. So in other words, we have psi tilde equals psi, which proves this uniqueness property. Okay, great. This is a good place to stop.